What is up, everybody? This is Chris, and welcome to Lost in Comics, where we help you get lost on your comic journey. This is the weekly top three comics to read for the week of December the 20th. We are so close to Christmas, the feelings in the air, and this pre-Christmas new comic book day did not disappoint. There was a lot of comic books. I will tell you what my favorites are, beginning with... Three! Three! The Incredible Hulk from Marvel Comics, Philip Kennedy Johnson on writing, Nick Klein on sweet, beautiful art, Matt Wilson on colors, and VCs Corey Petit on letters. This comic just continues to be a gem. In a sea of Marvel comic garbage, the Hulk comic just continues to reach its arm out and tell us that it is the best Marvel comic at the moment. Look, this comic has gone back to its horror roots, and that is on full display in issue number seven, an undead dead ghostwriter who is the protector of a small village that the Hulk has stumbled on challenges the Hulk because he thinks the Hulk has brought trouble to his village. Meanwhile, the real threat lurks in the shadows ready to attack. A wonderful Hulk ghostwriter fight uh, ensues, but then it turns into a team up. And although they are victorious in the battle, something happens to the Hulk that appears the battle is definitely not won. Nick Klein showing us why he's one of the best. There were a few pages in here that I just marveled at. Unbelievably beautiful, and Matt Wilson's colors are magnificent. It's there. If there's one Marvel comic you should be reading, it is The Incredible Hulk, and this one is getting a... You know, I absolutely love that book. Four. A 4.1. A 4.1 to start off this week's top three, which takes us to... A two. Batman Offworld, issue number two from DC Comics, Jason Aaron on writing, Doug Mankey on art, inks by Jaime Mendoza, colors by David Barron, and letters by Troy Petery. Now, Batman being in space should be an epic fail for a comic book story, but it's the exact opposite. This book is freaking amazing. It makes complete sense. Batman needs to be prepared for everything. That's his That's his M.O., right? So that he can defend Gotham properly from every situation. After an alien attack on Gotham, he realized... Shoot, I am not prepared for these super powerful extraterrestrials, these aliens that have skin like steel. So Batman decided, I need to take a trip to space so that I can face these aliens and figure out how to fight and how to beat them. When you read a comic about Batman going to space, all I ask is... Make it make sense and build a great story around the premise of Batman going to space. Jason Aaron is doing exactly that. He's doing a heck of a job with this book. One of the best Batman comics through two issues and one that has my full attention. This one is getting a... You know, I absolutely love that book. Four. A 4.2. So we've had a DC and we've had a Marvel book to start off this week's top three. Which publisher will take this week's pick of the week? I will tell you in just a moment, but before I do, I want to say thank you once again to everybody who participated in last week's Lost in Comics Best of 2023 Comic Award nomination show. From the panel to the community picks to the live chat that participated, everybody was engaged and at the top of their games. We had so much fun on both of those nights last Thursday and Friday. If you missed it, we've talked about at least 100 comic books and we presented our nominations for the best comics and creators of 2023. Go check out that video. It is incredible. Now that nomination show is just the beginning. Mark your calendars for Thursday, January the 11th, 2024. We will host the Lost in Comics Best of 2023 Comic Award Show presented by comic creators. That means people like Philip Kennedy Johnson, writer of The Hulk, Mark Russell, writer writer of Traveling to Mars, Kurt Pierre's uh, Indigo Children, and people like Jeff Lemire will be presenting awards that night. It's a night that you won't forget and one that you don't want to miss out on. Now, stand by for station identification. It is time for the... <laughs> it's the pick of the week. The pick of the week. Pick of the week. And this week's pick of the week is... 
Animal Pound, issue number one from Boom Studios, Tom King on writing, Peter Gross on art, Lost in Comics, best of 2023, best colorist nominee, Tamara Bonvillain, and letters by another uh, Lost in Comics, best of letterer nominee, Clayton Cowles. Now look, before you say it, I know Tom King is basically recreating Animal Farm for 2023. I also know that there is a similar book that's been one of my personal favorites. I've talked about it here on the channel, Animal Castle, and I love that book also. But Tom King has put his own spin on a similar story, and I couldn't help but feel captivated by it. It has a lot of dialogue. It is verbose, but I was captivated in those words. I enjoyed the whole story. I, I took my time with it. And I got through the whole thing, and I, when I closed the book, I said, holy crap, this is a fantastic comic book, and there's a lot to be said in this comic that needs to be said. Look, I'm such a fan when a story is centered around animals that we love, but a real human story is underneath the surface. You know, for some reason, seeing that story play out with cute, furry animals is so much more satisfying and palatable, but also the human in us feels instant compassion for animals, which we don't always feel for our fellow humans. Human, which obviously we should and that's kind of part of this story you know these cats and dogs are caged up in an animal pound they spend day after day in their little cages either awaiting an adoption that will more than likely never happen or for them to be put to sleep to be put to death and they don't really second guess any of that until lucky the dog gives this empowering speech to one of the cats and basically tells her hey we're idiots for just allowing man to determine our entire lives. Look, we're idiots for allowing ourselves to be trapped in these cages. If only the door could be open to us, we could be free and live our lives free together, dogs and cats and, and rabbits and all these other animals. It doesn't really matter what species we are. We just need to be free. Again, if only humans could get that message and unite together as one, it doesn't matter what we look like, right? It's a powerful message in this book, and it's the reason I am so fond of books like this. Look, I know Tom King gets a lot of heat for being pretentious and drinking his own Kool-Aid. I kind of get that, but forget the name Tom King is attached to this book. Read issue number one and tell me this book doesn't make you feel something. That is my two cents. I really love this first issue, and I am ready for issue issue number two, and this week's pick of the week is getting a... You know, huh? I absolutely love that book. Four. A 4.4. Now let's go to the runner-up section, beginning with Rare Flavors, issue number three from Boom Studios. We've got Ram V on writing, Felipe Andrade on art, with color assist from Ines Amaro, and letters by Anne World Design. Like, Ruben is a cannibal who loves fine cuisine and humans in equal measure. But his love for humanity always comes down to how he can prepare them for his finest meal. Look, Ruben wants to show the world his love for cuisine and culture in the form of a documentary he's creating. He chose a young, washed-out filmmaker to help create this documentary. And throughout the first few issues, Ruben's been really hard on this young guy. He feels that he doesn't get what Ruben is trying to create with this film. After all, Ruben really wants to capture the essence and the love for cuisine. Well, all that might change after the young guy figures out who Ruben really is by the end of this issue. This book puts you in the mood to cook. I want to step into the kitchen and follow the recipes in this comic to prepare a fine meal for my family, minus the human parts. Next up, Wonder Woman issue number four. DC Comics, Tom King again on writing, Daniel Semperi on art, Tomei Moray on colors, and Clayton Cowles on letters. Now, while the USA is turning on Wonder Woman and the president of the United States basically declares war on her and all Amazons, she spends this issue making a young, sick boy's dreams come true by spending an entire day doing whatever the heck he wants to do. Why do I love this issue? Issue number four really embodies and encapsulates who Wonder Woman is at her core. She's fierce and mighty. She's a warrior, but she's also full of love and compassion for humanity. She is a freaking hero. I can't think of a single issue of Wonder Woman that I have felt as connected to her and also felt so much appreciation for who she is as I did in issue number four. Fantastic. Highly recommending. Wonder Woman has been really, really good. Now, a couple of shout outs to get to. 
Canary, issue number two, Dark Horse Comics, Scott Snyder on writing and Dan Ponesian on art. Like, there's not a lot of great Western comics out with the exception of Enfield Gang Massacre and this one, but if you are looking for a good Western story, you need to be reading Canary. It's only three issues and you get a lot of bang for your buck. You will not regret it. Next up, Geiger Ground Zero, issue number two, Image Comics, Jeff Johns on writing and Gary Frank on beautiful, beautiful art. If you read the original Geiger comic. This is mandatory reading for you. A lot of origin story for Geiger. Look, if you've never read the first Geiger story, check out these two issues of Geiger Ground Zero. If you like them, go ahead and pick up Geiger Volume 1. You can read them in that order and feel very satisfied. Now it's time for the... The Palette Cleanser Pick of the Week. Look, when you have a stacked week of comic books, you need something that is going to break up your comic reading, something that doesn't take itself too serious, and this book did just that, and it is... Batman, Santa Claus, Silent Night, issue number three, DC Comics, Jeff Parker on writing, art by Michelle Bandini and Trevor Hairsign, colors by Alex Sinclair, and letters by Pat Brosso. Now, DC releases holiday comics around this time of the year, every year, and most are pretty much throwaway stories, but this one is actually really good. There's Norse mythology blended in with a new origin of Santa and Krampus thrown into a blender with your favorite DC heroes and the story even has Hawk Girl and Blue Beetle. Obscure characters, right? And Blue Beetle is shocked that there's a real Santa and that he gets to be part of the team that helps Santa take out Krampus. This is a book that I didn't anticipate reading for the entire series, but it got me hooked from issue number one. Perfect timing with the December releases. A book you may want to check out if you are looking for a good time for Christmas. What did you read this week? When you take an objective look at Animal Pound, what did you think of it? I'm curious to know. Next week is Christmas for those who celebrate. I hope you have an amazing holiday. Share time with your loved ones. Hopefully you get some nerdy presents. What did you ask Santa for this year? Let me know in the comments below. I thank you for watching. And as always, stay lost in comics, my friends. I will see you soon. 